right this time. All right, there we go. I set the stream right this time. Regulations might be getting worse for crypto because the mighty Eliz because the mighty Elizabeth Warren. Yeah, because the mighty Elizabeth Warren is pushing for more crypto restrictions and regulations. And she actually does seem to be serious. I don't think she's going to be... Um, I don't think she's going to be uh, realistic. Realistically, I don't think she's going to be satisfied with like some BS answer from Gary Gensler and other parties. So, yeah, if you're in the other stream, this is the the actual official stream channel. I just didn't set the stream right last time. The Chicago Bulls are launching an NFT with Shopify. Thought they would go with Chillaz as well, but they're going with Shopify. And um, Binance is going to strictly uh, restrict, uh, going to severely restrict non-KYC withdrawals to the point where they're just not really all that viable. So got to do that KYC. In terms of Bitcoin price, we are at 37,879, about a thousand points higher than our low, but still haven't retested 40,000 yet. I do believe we will retest 40,000 this week. Hopefully we can actually just shoot past it. I'm also deciding like next year whether I'm going to get the Outback or the uh, Forester in terms of a Subaru. But uh, Bitcoin hash rate is kind of like middling at around 100 million. Um, it's going to take a couple months to recover. It takes a long time to move all that equipment, get everything set up. But I do think they are working. They are definitely working on some of the contracts. Uh, most, most certainly they are working on some of the contracts. And that's pretty cool. Um, but it's going to take a couple months before we truly recover. So the hash rate might stay down. Um, look for a recovery, probably like, you know, in Q4 of this year, it's not going to be that fast. So yeah, definitely, uh, look forward to that. Look forward to that. Get the Forester. My Forester is awesome. I don't know. Most of my friends have been saying, get the Outback. Cause like fitting, like fitting, you can fit more fishing equipment in the Outback, but I think the Forester is fine as well. I think they're like the Forester and the Outback are pretty much the same almost a lot of it's like they're pretty much the same the outback's a little more expensive but you can have more power on the outback which i really don't care about all that much but uh there it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a tough decision um especially like it depends on what i really it really depends on what i need but either way let's talk about senator elizabeth warren the mighty elizabeth warren she seems to be um she seems to be wanting to restrict crypto regulations, uh, especially like I think like her main concern is the the derivatives, which I kind of agree with. Um, I don't really know what she thinks about spot trading, but it has a lot to do with like banks and stuff. It really does have a lot to do with like banks. So here we go. This is from the block crypto. And uh, she seems to be pretty much bent on getting some crypto regulations in. She's not just going to be BS'd. So U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren urged Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen uh, to spearhead the development of a coordinated and cohesive regulatory strategy. So they want more regulations. Um, the thing about this is it's kind of weird because they don't really know which agency actually governs it. <clears throat> they don't know if it's going to be like the Treasury, um, the SEC, or the CFTC. They're all kind of fighting over it. So Warren did actually send another letter. Uh, that actually um, that actually proposed that Janet Yellen, because Janet Yellen is the chair of the Financial Stability Oversight Council, uh, and that is another party that's involved. It's not only the SEC, and they want to act with urgency and use statutory authority to address cryptocurrencies' risk. So she thinks cryptocurrencies are with a lot of risk. It definitely is with like all the margin trading stuff. <clears throat> Elizabeth um, Warren actually wrote in this letter, <clears throat> sorry, that I have become increasingly concerned about the dangers cryptocurrency pose to investors, consumers, and the environment. Environmental thing, um, they're doing like green farming, so I, I guess that's going to be alleviated. And the environment in the absence of sufficient regulation in the United States. However, as the demand for cryptocurrencies continues to grow, so she does acknowledge that the demand for cryptocurrencies is growing, and these assets become... Uh, more embedded in our financial systems. So like Warren is not trying to ban cryptos. She is like, she has conceded the fact that crypto is going to be more embedded in our financial system, which is why she wants to regulate it. The council must determine whether these trends raise concerns beyond investor and consumer protection and extend to broader systematic vulnerabilities that can threaten financial stability. So obviously like she is kind of like worried about how crypto would threaten the U.S. economy. I don't really think it would. 
So, like, basically the FSOC is going to fight with the SEC and the CFTC to see who actually has jurisdiction. Obviously, like, <clears throat> Warren is... Uh, Warren is worried about the energy consumption of cryptocurrency networks. And she wants stronger federal oversight over like, you know, how much energy like uh, Bitcoin takes. But you know, the, the thing is that might hurt Bitcoin, but in the long run, that wouldn't hurt other cryptocurrencies because most of the other cryptocurrencies aren't proof of work. So like things like Ethereum Classic, Litecoin and Dogecoin, they might face a, a tough road ahead. Because they are uh, proof of work, so proof of work definitely not going forward is the f uh, definitely not the future as far as going forward. So, like, she wants the FOSC to use its statu statutory authority to contain the systematic risks. Um, she's mainly concerned about like banking, obviously the environment, derivatives, and stuff like that. I think they do need to restrict like derivatives margin trading and options trading. But I think like regular spot trading, they don't really need to, they don't really need to regulate all that much. I mean, just like basic stock, just like basic regulations, but they don't need to come too hard on. As for the environmental stuff, I think like they're going to work with the EPA on that. So th there are going to be more regulations coming into crypto, whether you like it or not. Um, I don't know which agency it's going to come from, though. <clears throat> like Gary, like Gary Gensler. I mean, like Gary Gensler is with the SEC, obviously. Hmm. Gensler is with the SEC. So like they're different agencies. And one of the troubles is like they don't really know which agency oversees all this stuff. Mass adoption is definitely the play, but we don't want extremely, we don't really want uh, extremely restricted regulations. In, in terms of like regulations getting worse, I would say like, I would say like mining regulations are definitely going to get worse. Because like they're going to really start looking at like how clean crypto is. So Bitcoin is going to have to switch to like I thought this clean energy thing was just something bought up by Elon Musk, but it does look like clean. Uh, it does look like clean energy and and Bitcoin is going to be like a thing going forward into the future. The regulations, yeah, it's not only leverage trading though. They're, they are going to they are going to regulate mining as well because like they want uh, they're I, they're really going to push hard for green energy mining. So that's like a real thing. What happens on the twenty eighth? I I think people are um I don't really know if people are like bullish for the twenty eighth or bearish for the twenty eighth. My guess is not that much is really coming, but it seems like people are really looking forward to the twenty eighth. I think it's like going to be one of those generic answers and then they're going to work on it like more in the future. Um, I don't really see something devastating happening and I don't really see anything really great happening on the 28th either. Yeah, like leverage, look, leverage options and margin trading is going to be heavily regulated as they should be. Like leverage margin and options trading is going to be severely limited. And, and that's, I, I think like that's probably for the, I think that's probably for the better. Um, like the U.S. is not going to allow like 100x leverage or like, you know, uh, the U.S. is not going to allow 100x leverage or like 50x leverage or anything. That's going to be severely restricted. I, I really do think affiliate programs as well. I really do think affiliate programs as well are going to be extremely limited, uh, are going to be more restricted as well um, in terms of like how they can actually pay out. They are coming really hard after crypto. They are. They are coming hard after crypto over certain aspects of crypto. You are right about that. Yeah. But this was look. This was going to come sooner or later, anyways. They're de they're not going to allow crypto to run willy nilly. Like once once it got big, they're definitely they weren't going to allow crypto to just run willy nilly everywhere. So that's that's not uh, that was that was always kind of like a dream scenario, which would never happen. And that's why like you know Binance is that's why Binance is really being cracked down on, because realistically, like they weren't going to let you do whatever you want staking. Yeah, I think like proof of stake, proof of authority, and those other um. Methods are definitely going to be the way going forward. Binds inflation. We all knew that. Look, we all knew that inflation after COVID, regardless of who was in office, is basically was basically going to be pretty high. Like the last couple of years, they printed so much money that once this pandemic thing was over, it was going to inflate. And it's not really out of control. It's going to be like four or five percent over the next two or three years. And that's about it. And then it will go back down to normal. I mean, like inflation has been below average for like the last 20 years. So they're going to take like a year or two for inflation to catch up. And then like essentially everything's going to go back to normal. What is that? 
what is it that is coming? Is it an SEC thing or can I research after? There isn't anything specific. There's actually not anything specific that's coming. Uh, but basically, like, they're, they're going to try to hammer out which agency controls what part in crypto. They're definitely going to have more restrictive rules on Bitcoin mining, especially like with green energy. So that actually might not bode well for the hash rate. Um, but they are going to... And they're also going to limit like margin trading, uh, leverage trading, and derivatives trading. I think those three. I think those three things will have a big, big target on their back in terms of regulation. Spot trading, I'm not really sure. They might limit exchanges somewhat, but we don't really know about that. But margin trading, derivatives trading, and like options trading, I think that's going to be really uh, lowered. Uh, they cannot. realistically inflation is just going to be high for like the next two years but everyone expected inflation to be high you can't print as much money as they did the last 10 years and not expect to have inflation i mean like eventually interest rates are going to have to be raised i mean like trump should have done it in his term but he just delayed it till the next person came along it might be able to hinder a pump i don't really know what's gonna i don't really know what's gonna uh I really don't know what's going to um, happen on the 28th. My guess is it's not going to be anything major, but it's, it's hard to say. It's really going to be hard to say. Also, like Binance, like C, uh, Binance, the Binance CEO is actually looking to step down. The Binance CEO is actually looking to step down from uh, his position. And he's looking for someone with like regulatory experience to replace him. Now, CZ is not going away. He's not like CZ is not going to just exit crypto, obviously. Uh, CZ is definitely going to stay in crypto. I think he wants to be the one like behind the scenes pulling behind the scenes pulling the strings. But he also definitely wants someone with regulatory experience that can actually work with regulators to help Binance make it through. Binance is being hit. Binance is actually being hit a lot by regulations right now. And he probably wants someone that can salvage that situation because he wants Binance to be able to trade in a lot of countries. I don't. I see him as being smart. He's not the kind of guy that works with like the regulators very well. So he's looking for someone to replace him as CEO to work with regulators. So that's a pretty big piece of news. CZ may not be the CZ. Honestly, may not be the um, head of Binance for long. Inflation as a measure. I mean, look, Castle Circle, you just measure like what a gallon of milk costs like, uh, you know, 30 years ago versus what a gallon of milk costs now. It really hasn't gone up that much. Dude, Castle Circle, a gallon of fuel is maybe like two to three times its price, like from like 30, 40 years ago. Like yearly inflation year over year isn't really that high. Uh, I don't know about the mass, man. We'll see. About bug, no. The GOP honestly isn't more crypto friendly. Trump was not very crypto friendly. It was Trump's administration that sued a, a Ripple, and like Gar like Jay Clayton was basically completely anti crypto. We all knew that. Like the Trump administration was actually very, very much anti-crypto. Gensler isn't that much better than Clayton, but he's a little better than Clayton. The, the, like Gensler really isn't that much better than Clayton, but he is better than uh, Jay Clayton. Like remember, like it was, remember it was his like, it, it was Trump's administration that actually sued Ripple, and Trump actually called cryptocurrency a scam. So his administration was not very, uh, not very friendly towards crypto at all. Covid will be doing this thing like this. I don't think so. I really don't think we're gonna. I really don't think we're gonna close down the economy again uh, for this Delta variant. Uh, Covid, yeah. 
like the GOP, like Trump's administration was extremely anti-crypto. Um, the Biden administration, honestly, isn't that. Hey, afternoon, man. Thanks for the donation. Like the Biden administration isn't that much better. The Biden administration isn't that much better, but the Biden administration is better than the Trump administration in terms of like being friendly towards crypto. Because he like Trump himself twice called it a scam. People were trying to make up excuses for that, but he straight up called it a scam twice. Generally, like both, like, like both, uh, hating on crypto and like pro crypto are a bipartisan thing. The, the the bills that are pro crypto are always bipartisan. That's like the one thing in Congress that's actually kind of bipartisan. Either like the people that like people that don't like crypto come from both sides of the aisle, and people that like crypto also come from both sides of the aisle. So crypto has this really strange spot where like it's either bipartisan support or bipartisan against. It goes both ways. Like both parties want to regulate crypto. Because like I think people have given up on I think people have given up on trying to ban it because they know they can't really ban it. But crypto is more of a bipartisan thing. But this administration is more friendly than the last one towards crypto. Like the administration itself. Like Trump and Barr basically wanted to shut it down. They couldn't, but they kind of wanted to. Trump knows. Yeah, I mean, Elizabeth Warren wants to regulate crypto. She's given it, she's she's not going to she's not going to say ban it, but she wants to regulate it. Trump just outright wanted to ban it. Can Icon reach $10? I think like Icon can reach new heights. It's going to take a while though. Yeah, yeah look, Gensler is a uh, Gensler does uh, understand crypto better than Trump, but he's not extremely but he's not not extremely crypto friendly either. He's yes, Gensler is better than Jay Clayton by like a long stretch. Clayton was just basically anti crypto. But the, the thing is, like Gensler's not that friendly. Like Gensler's also known for very heavy handed regulations. So I wouldn't expect that much from Gary Gensler. Dude, he said it was a scam like twice, and Barr wasn't Barr wasn't any better on crypto either. Like, I remember when Trump actually issued those statements and then like the right winger was like, what he really meant was this. No, he didn't really mean anything else. He said crypto was a scam. There's no like he really meant that. And, and like I said, his administration was very, very crypto unfriendly. I'm going to do. Look, 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 Castle Circle, a, a gallon of milk is still a gallon of milk. I've bought like, I've bought groceries for like 20, 30 years now. The inflation isn't nearly as much as people think. Because like, they always look at year to year and like one year it might be like 5%, but then it'll be like zero for like the next 10 years. Just talking trash because he was against it. it look, look, I don't really care about FB's leader. Like his administration was incredibly anti-crypto. Like basically, like all his statements on cryptocurrency were basically like anti-cryptocurrency, and the people he picked were also extremely anti-crypto. I mean, they literally sued Ripple the day that they literally sued Ripple the day they left office, and like they denied a Bitcoin ETF basically forever, essentially, based on whatever, but. Yeah, since leaving office. Sure, but the thing is like, they were all, but look, they were all influenced by the president himself. So Mnuchin was actually pretty anti-crypto while Trump was in office. So like that administration by itself, like the Trump administration was actually not that great for crypto. They could have like, I don't think like the, a Clinton administration would have been that much better, but like his administration was awful for crypto. Yeah, I, we're, I actually mentioned that Binance is going to cut down withdrawals to 0 0.06 BTC. Look, regulations, I think like in terms of crypto mining, they are going to have to do like green mining or they're just going to have to switch to something else besides Bitcoin, which is kind of unlikely. 
And like for derivatives, derivatives, margin trading and option trading, they are going to have to, for derivatives, margin trading and option trading, um, they are going to have, to, there are, they are going to be a lot of restrictions. Now, the thing is like, I think like, uh, I think like regulation and derivatives is completely necessary because derivatives are basically manipulation tactics without actually holding the asset. But like regulations, I think on crypto are overall getting tighter. Regulations getting tighter are inevitable in like a financial industry when it grows bigger. Is Cardano on schedule with smart contracts? I don't know. Like that's hard to say. I mean, if they release in September, it is. Castle Circle, how much was a gallon of milk like 30 or 40 years ago? How much is it now? I can still buy a gallon of milk at Target for $2 and Walmart's even cheaper. I've never, I don't remember when I could ever buy a gallon of milk for like under a dollar. Maybe like 98 cents was like the lowest one. Uh, and that was like 30, 40 years ago. So like the price doubling over like 30 years isn't a huge amount of inflation each year. I believe Ripple would have had a negative action against it by either administration. Maybe. Um, no, the like you just haven't been, like the SEC, once, once they sue someone, once they actually sue someone, the SEC honestly like stays pretty quiet until there's actually a, a resolution. So just because the SEC hasn't said anything doesn't uh, just because just because the SEC hasn't said anything does not mean like the 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 case is actually going well for the other party. Remember, like when they sued Shipchain or Ken, the SEC didn't say a damn thing until like the case actually resolved, and they won both those cases. Now the punishment was pretty light though. Gas prices? Yeah, but I mean, like gas was maybe, I remember like gas back in like 1990 was like a dollar. Now it swings between two and three dollars. And it's been, it's been like over 30 years. So if you take it year by year, it's not that big. Yeah, you might look at like gas prices last year versus this year. Yeah, it jumped a lot. But you're, you're, you're forgetting that for the last 15 years, gas prices pretty much stayed constant. Elizabeth Cheney is going to tear the R's and new. I, I don't really care about Liz Cheney and all that stuff right now. I mean, I'll, I'll see what it resolves. But in terms of crypto, like neither administration has been really that great against crypto. The Biden administration has been better than the Trump administration in terms of crypto, but not by that much. Like, I don't think you're going to get a completely pro crypto uh, presidential administration. Dude, it's like 285. It's 285 in Wisconsin. People will find a way to avoid taxes by... Well, first of all, you can't... You're, they're not going to avoid taxes because... I mean, like, 0. 0.06, if you have a large amount of Bitcoin, it would take you, like, 14, 15 days just to withdraw all the Bitcoin. Eventually, Binance is going to shut down all non-KYC withdrawals. Axie Infinity... So Axie Infinity, um, I don't really play it, but it's really popular, especially in the Philippines. I heard like half of all players of Axie were in the Philippines. I, I did hear like Axie Infinity was really popular in the Philippines because it's actually more profitable to play Axie Infinity than actually go to work. Uh, the crypto, the crypto hope we jumped into in, with the smart contract soon with a bull run end of the year and touch eight. I mean, I, I'm looking for 88 to get to five to 10, but it does, but it does depend on Bitcoin coming up a lot. It does actually depend on Bitcoin coming up a lot. I mean, you have to realize that the Trump SEC was definitely more hostile than the Biden SEC towards crypto. Now, like I said, the Biden SEC isn't that much better. But they're better than the Trump SEC. I'm playing Skyweaver right now, a new crypto card game on closed beta. You know, the closed beta games are actually something that you might want to get into. Because, like, they probably, like, for beta players, they actually might have rewards when the game releases. And those rewards actually might end up uh, being, like, worth a lot of money. The top three presidents, probably Lincoln, uh, Washington, and FDR. Or Lincoln, Jefferson, and FDR. One of those combination. Like Washington would actually be number three. Lincoln would be number one. And then FDR would probably be number two. And either Jefferson or Washington for number three. 
Because Jefferson, like, literally doubled the size of the United States. What's the price target you're looking for BTC to reach in August? I'm looking, well, August, I don't really have too much because, like, the thing about BTC is hash rate's not really going to recover in August. I'm hoping it breaks, like, 45,000 in August. It could go either way. I mean, it could blow up in August. But for right now, I don't really see that. A lot of poor people from the Philippines quit their job to go full-time for Axie. Yeah, I mean, that's what we just mentioned. Like, it, it, it actually pays them more to play Axie Infinity than actually go to work because, like, it's a lower-wage country. With gaming being the new, with ga yeah, Reagan and Trump don't figure in the top four. With gaming being the new workforce in the near future, I mean, economically, Clinton was a lot better than Trump. Uh, Eisenhower was pretty good. Grant, not so much. With gaming being new workforce in the near future, supervisors will be re retitled as warlocks and managers warlords. I mean, the thing is, I do think like working from home is definitely going to be a lot more popular in the future than it is now, right now. Is it too little by Axie Infinity? It was a really hard rejection at 40k, but we didn't actually go down that much. Like 30, I, I think 36, I think 36,500 is the, uh, is actually the most that we actually went down. So I, I don't think we actually, it didn't actually go down that much. It didn't go back down to 30,000. I'm hoping we avoid that. <clears throat> yeah. So the thing about Clinton is like, you know, all the harassment stuff is I like, the thing about Clinton's presidency is he actually had a really good economy, plus he actually balanced the deficit. He actually, he was the last person that we actually had a surplus. Like, Clinton actually, like, like Clinton actually, like, Clinton's economy was great, and like I said, plus he actually had a surplus. He was the last president that had a surplus in our national, in our budget. Now, one of the things that he did wrong was he didn't actually use that surplus to pay down the debt, but he actually had a surplus, unlike everyone else that came after him. <clears throat> so the free scholarship and the free scholarship in Axie Infinity is not really a scholarship. It's essentially like a, a profit sharing model where you borrow someone else's Axie to actually make a profit, but you have to split the profit. Like you, you have, I mean, Grant did some good things, but he's de he doesn't really rate for me like as in the top even like 10 or 20 maybe. So like, yeah, so the Axie Infinity Scholarship is basically you borrowing someone else's Axie and then using that to uh, make money. HSK, that's why I rate Jefferson as one of the best U.S. presidents. He like literally doubled the price of the country with that purchase. Based on the sentiment of these economic and public policy professors, they interview on Bloomberg and CNBC, it's only the privacy coins most governments want to shut down. I actually think, like, look, I think the government's number one concern is Bitcoin. Because it's the biggest. Like, Monero eventually is going to be targeted by governments, no doubt. No doubt, like, Monero is going to be targeted by governments. Because like the, the the privacy cryptos are going to be the privacy cryptos are going to be targeted hard, and the way they're going to attack the cr privacy cryptos is by eliminating the privacy cryptos' liquidity. That's the main way they're going to attack privacy cryptos. That's like the the way. That's actually the way they're going to actually. That's what that's the way they're going to attack privacy cryptos because they can't really they really can't ban them. They really can't ban privacy cryptos. They really can't ban privacy cryptos at all. Um, because like it's decentralized, so there's always going to be people operating them outside what they can control. But if they but if they attack the liquidity, but if they actually attack the liquidity of privacy cryptos, 
then they can actually shut down like a lot of use for it because if you don't have liquidity in terms of like crypto to fiat, then you know the crypto is really not all that much use. The regulations issue. Elizabeth Warren is uh, like pushing for tighter regulations, especially around like uh, leverage trading and derivatives, which is fine. I don't really know if it's going to impact the spot trading market that much. I'm looking for five to ten still for ADA, but that might have been delayed. Axie, one coin that's ignoring market pumping. My question is, is it too late to buy? So the thing about Axie Infinity is like Axie Infinity, the game itself, like the economy is kind of structured like a pyramid. Like it requires new people to onboard to, to keep increasing the demand for uh, Axies. If new people don't onboard, then the economy kind of like sort of falls apart. Well, the thing is like a lot of smaller governments are not going to a lot of the smaller governments are not going to ban uh, privacy coins, first of all. And the thing is, like, there's still going to be a dark net where privacy coins are actually used. So you can't fully ban privacy coins. You really can't ban privacy coins. So CZ is not leaving Binance, but he actually may be... CZ is not leaving Binance, but he may be stepping down as CEO of Binance. He's not leaving Binance, though. Do you think that that would affect people that decide to hold long-term if they decide to regulate in that manner? Um, I don't think so. I mean, there might be some cash out and tax implications, but that's probably coming in the future. What, what governments, the ability to track and catch criminal transactions will also allow them to continue to be decentralized. So LPT investor, that's pretty much impossible. So like what governments really want to do is be able to monitor all tr crypto transactions. That's what governments really want. I mean, they want to be able to monitor everything. They don't want things to be decentralized. Decentralization is a big no-no for governments because if, if you're like decentralized, if, if, you, if you're decentralized, they can't really track what you're doing. And governments not being able to track what uh, people are doing uh, is not a good thing. What do you see being the biggest player in crypto in the future in terms of the biggest companies such as Google, Amazon, Apple? Um, maybe like Samsung's already pretty much into crypto. Google and Amazon and Apple really haven't done much. Pretty good, CC. Pretty good. Like Amazon and Apple honestly haven't done much. Samsung's already pretty much like, yeah. Like, like Samsung's pretty much already into crypto. Hey, I know. Thanks for the donation. Thanks for the donation. The thing is, like, if you want to be able to track criminal transactions, you're going to be able to see everything. Look, I'm pretty sure like none of the governments are really going to allow completely anonymous transactions. That they're going to crack down on. They're they're definitely going to crack down on that. Crypto is going to be like another. Crypto honestly is going to be like just another branch like banking. They're going to be able to see your financial transactions for the most part. I mean, yes, DEXs are going to be play a role. You can play lay out the way governments can crack down on DEXs. Too many. It's some kind of magical instrument. So first of all, if you've been reading the, if you've been reading the Uniswap news, a lot of DEXs aren't actually decentralized. Remember, like Uniswap has the ability to shut off certain coins. So like that that's that's what they announced. They, Uniswap is going to start limiting access to certain assets. So that's the thing. Like even like your so-called decentralized exchanges, they're not all fully decentralized. And also, governments could just geofence them. If governments start geofencing, people will have to use VPNs, and most people won't go through that extra step. If they kill, like, if they restrict, if they massively restrict the liquidity, because, like, even if you're at a DEX, if you actually want to cash out into cash, you still have to go through, like, a centralized exchange or something like that, right? So, like, if they actually nix, like, the liquidity for DEXs, then, like, you know, the DEXs will become very unappealing. Like, yes, the, those would be extreme actions, and I don't think they'll do it, uh, at least not right now, but they do have options to do things like that. They do have options to do things like that. So like, it's not like these things aren't like the government can't directly shut these things down, but they can make it really hard for people to use these things uh, who Amazon is going to work with Amazon, like from their job posting, it seems like Amazon wants to work with like stable coins and stuff, 
But stable coins are going to be hit pretty hard as well because the, the, the regulations. ARB, if they can't track crypto transactions, how do they track those BTC payments that help them find and arrest the guy who is running the child? Uh, they can definitely track BTC transactions. Th that's where uh, that's where um, like companies like CypherTrace come in. Like, like if they really want to, they can track Bitcoin transactions. It's Monero that's really hard for them. It's like things like Monero that's like really, really hard for them to track. But the thing is, it takes a lot of manpower. Like it, it actually, but the thing is, it takes a lot of manpower um, to track those. So they don't have the manpower to track everything. BitBoy thinks uh, Amazon's going to use Algo. I don't really know where he gets these things. I feel like Amazon like basically dispersed all the all the crypto rooms my guess is like they're not really gonna like they're really working with stable coins and maybe cbdc's like eventually i do think they'll um, accept crypto i mean they're already cards that you can use your crypto on amazon you just have converted into cash first because like if you really if you really read the job listing like they're really interested in the stable look uh, uh the, the stable coins the thing is like amazon is a merchant they have to pay bills like everyone else and the thing is, like, if you have to pay bills day by day, you're not going to be interested in ultra volatile currency that might be worth five dollars one day and four dollars the next day. That could really destroy a company if it goes the wrong way. So realistically, Amazon is uh, Amazon has a lot of risk accepting payments in crypto. Now, if the crypto market ever really settles down, if the crypto market really ever settles down, like that could be really big. But them using a cryptocurrency right now is not really, I don't think it's in the cards right now. Like they might accept crypto and convert it into cash immediately, but them actually accepting crypto like as crypto and then holding it. I mean, they might do that with their, they might do that with their corporate treasury. And that's something that you can actually hope towards, but them actually accepting payments in form of crypto and holding that payment, probably not going to happen. BitBoy also said BTC closer, closer to 500K than 200K. I don't think Bitcoin's even going to reach 200K. It's going to take a while to recover. And some of this regulatory FUD is going to slow the growth down. Look how governments crack down on peer-to-peer -peer downloading. Yeah, I mean, it, it can be done. It can be done. They can actually make it... Um, they, can actually, uh, they can actually make it where it's really hard to do that stuff. That's not a hard thing to do. It takes manpower. That's true. My understanding is that now a number of nerds are going to try to create software that helps government track BTC. You know, the thing is LPT investor, I can see that going horribly wrong because regardless of what the nerds do, they're going to make mistakes. And then the government's going to get sued because of those mistakes. They actually do need like an actual human overseeing it just for legal purposes is my guess. Now, I was never going to get a Lambo. Lambos are completely pointless to me. I have not checked out Osmosis. Are you surprised BTC went to 38K? Not really. Uh, look, the thing about BTC rising and falling is like with, with so many leveraged positions, I'm not surprised at all because like when, because you can actually liquidate either way. And once you liquidate, the price moves up and down really fast. Dude, Jerome Gettysburg, you should really invest in other things besides XRP. Like putting all your hope on one coin is just not smart. It seems like every time we get a small run, the FUD on uh, regulations appears. What a coincidence. Well, I mean, regulations is a constant thing. There's there's like FUD on regulations regardless if it's bear or bull market. Regardless if it's a bear market or a bull market, there's like FUD on regulations either way. You don't need to use BitTorrent anymore because you can go on a website, paste a YouTube link, and download MP3. So a bad example. Yeah. A true decentralized exchange maybe could not be shut down. But I don't really know if there is a true decentralized exchange. Like Uniswap just showed they're not truly fully decentralized. They did bigger airdrop than Uniswap for Atom holders. Cool. But yeah, like BTC is going to continue to be pretty volatile and massive regulatory news could definitely affect it. I don't really know what's going to happen on the 28th. Like I said, I don't think anything big, but you know, I could definitely be wrong about that. I bought some PDEX. You should get into some of the other cryptos we talked about. They're all pretty much better than XRP at this point. I am buying high growth stocks with my Matic staking rewards. That's probably a good idea. That's probably a very good idea. I mean, I would actually buy some blue chips with high dividends because like, that's like passive income. It's more guaranteed. 
the thing is like a truly decentralized exchange would not be able to restrict certain tokens uh only if you're not really decentralized can you actually restrict other tokens because that means you have some kind of a back door or some kind of god key which means you're not truly decentralized if you have a god key you're not decentralized gate.io uh, some people have used it i haven't really used it myself i've actually like looked at the inter use the interface once it's okay but I can't really say too much about it. Do you think we'll reach a point when they will regulate BTC? I mean, they're trying to, but the whole nature of crypto and the technology makes it a lot harder for them to regulate BTC. That's the problem. My only plan is to cash out and create income for my crypto goal is to create 100K per year. I see. Yeah, it's not about being smart or anything with Lambos. If you really like cars, if you want to buy a Lambo, that's fine. I just don't really care about cars. Uh, what's the So the Binance KYC deal. Yeah, it's about time I talked about that. Um, because they've severely restricted KYC, non-KYC withdrawals. So they've, they've severely restricted non-KYC withdrawals. So like, you know, Binance, oh, by the way, you can earn $3 in Balancer and $3 in Clover Finance on Coinbase. I just got invited. But anyways, um, the Binance deal is, the, the Binance deal is that uh, they're going to restrict non-KYC withdrawals. It used to be two BTC per day, but you can only withdraw 0.6 BTC a day um, if, you, if you're not KYC. Yeah, Binance is limiting leverage. They actually deleted a lot of the, they actually deleted a lot of the um, liquidity for leverage yesterday. But this is just for their regular withdrawals. So if you're a Binance user, they're going to they're going to reduce the amount you can withdraw from Binance a day for non KYC accounts um, from uh, from like two BTC a day to 0 0.06 BTC a day. So if you have significant amounts of money in crypto and you're not KYC on Binance, it's basically like no go because like you won't be able to move money out of Binance. My money thing does not go more than okay. Yeah, I mean that's. I usually don't use more than 3K USD a month either. I mean, like this month it'll go way over because I have like this, the car is giving me so much trouble. I'm at, I'm almost at the point where I'm just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm buying a new car. But like I put, I've already put a couple thousand into it. So I'm kind of like just going to fix it again. The point is they can make a lot harder, not eradicate it, but a lot harder. And that's not, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like they can't eradicate a lot of these things. That's not possible. But if they make it hard enough, like 95% of people will stop using it and it's effectively kind of dead and not really a concern for them anymore. Curious, what's the best coins at stake in your opinion currently other than Matic and ADA? Band is doing okay. ICX is still doing okay in terms of staking. It's all passive income. You have until August 4th to pull the funds off Binance. Yeah, like if you have a lot of money in Binance, you should definitely pull your funds off Binance at this point. Binance is not really viable if you have a lot of money to trade anymore and you didn't do KYC. Now, if you did the KYC on Binance, it's perfectly fine. But that means if you're in the United States, you cannot use Binance.com soon anymore unless you plan to withdraw less than 0 0.606 BTC a day. Yeah, it's going to be a Subaru. Yeah, I mean, like living at living with, look, if you're a single, like living for $3,000 a month USD, honestly, is not that hard. Well, I mean, I know like that's not possible for us because my rent's like $700 USD. So I, I would have to like not eat and not go anywhere. So that's not possible. Osmos has around 400% APY at the moment. Nice. No, no, CC, like CC in the United States, it's really not possible to live on, to live on 700 USD a month. Now I'm just going to get the Forester or their Outback. It's either the Forester or the Outback I'm going to get. Um... Yeah, like it, it's not really possible to live on 700 USD a month uh, uh, in the United States, unless you live in a really cheap part of the country and you only do rent and food. My rent's 700 USD. Like my rent plus internet and everything, 700 USD. So like, that's not really viable. I have to spend at least a couple hundred on food. Um, so I don't eat coconuts every day. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, yeah. No, I actually have a two bedroom apartment. I, sp I have a roommate, but our, our apartment's 1100 square feet. And we have, we have like two, uh, two, uh, patty. We have like two balconies as well. Look, I, I don't really, I don't live in New York or LA. I mean, Brent and Madison is not that expensive. I mean, it's cheaper. It's even cheaper in the South. 
when they succeed in making it a harder for everyone to kiss that twenty dollar and even that ten dollar, that's what all the dex maximalists need to understand. No, you know the thing is like most ADA and XRP don't trade on dexes; they trade on centralized exchanges. And some of these coins, like a lot of these coins, are going to toe the line on regulations. You don't need dexes to trade ADA or XRP. Dexes are mostly for trading ERC twenty tokens and like basically like a NFT stuff. At Wisconsin. Yeah, if you live in Miami, rent's going to be expensive. But if you live in like Tampa or Jacksonville, it's not that expensive. Like if you live in the most expensive cities, yes, it's going to be expensive. But if you live in the Midwest or you live in my, if you live in Florida, that's not Miami or Fort Lauderdale, it's not that expensive. We pay twelve hundred for a two bedroom, so we just split it in half, and it's like six seven hundred dollars a person, and that's with internet and utilities. VT to one USD this year. Yeah, I think it's still possible towards the end of the year because like Bitcoin has to rise first and Bitcoin has to rise a lot for VT to get to one USD. I mean, if Bitcoin doesn't rise like to an all new time, high, all, all time high, I don't think it's going to reach that much. But if you watch my last VT video, like if Bitcoin does rise to 100K, $1 VT might actually just be selling it short. But that's if Bitcoin rises to 100K and that is a huge if. Enough crypto so I don't buy more crypto, just growth for high dividend stocks. Nice. Yeah, look, VET is probably going to follow regulations, but this the segment's not fully focused on VET. Like it's basically Elizabeth Warren wanting to like look at like what crypto's impacts, I mean Bitcoin's impacts more more or less on the environment. And like with derivatives, like with what crypto's impacts on banks. And for derivative margin trading, like, look, derivatives, margin trading, and options are going to be regulated, like it or not. And I think, like, derivatives, margin trading, and options should be regulated. But, um, and also, like, crypto mining with the environmental impact is going to be regulated, too. So, like, like green crypto, like, green crypto is going to be a real thing. Like, they're going to demand that it's more green. The, the thing is, like, you shouldn't really plan to hold a coin forever. If you see a good opportunity to sell, you should definitely sell. VET pending BTC's pump over the next few years. Yeah, I mean, like, you have to depend on a BTC pump if you're looking for an altcoin to go that high in the next couple of months. Otherwise, not really going to be possible. It's not the new green deal. It's basically just like, I mean, politicians on both sides have been bringing up the thing with, like, Bitcoin's pollution issues. Because like it does take a lot of electricity and a lot of power to mine Bitcoin. However, if they use start using wind and solar to mine Bitcoin, they'll probably shut up at this point. So that's the whole thing. Also, if you're a Chicago Bulls fan, which admittedly I'm not, uh, Jordan's not there anymore. They actually de de did debut an NFT for the Chicago Bulls, uh, which is pretty cool. So Chicago Bulls team up with Shopify. So the Bulls are not using Chillaz, they're using Shopify, and they're going to launch an NFT series. So they've launched an NFT drop via Shopify. So, and uh, the e commerce platform recently integrated Suites NFT Marketplace. This is from, um, this is, they're actually doing an NFT from the Jordan era. So, this is the, this is the uh, article on Cointelegraph. So, so like the NFT isn't like with our team right now because Zach Levine's like the best thing they have for their team right now, but they're going to debut an NFT depicting six championship wins from the 1990s via leading e-commerce platform Shopify. So every NBA team's getting on in on this NFT. I I think like that the the Bulls are eventually going to use Chillas for their fan token, but right now they've actually released an NFT uh, suite through Shopify. It's called the it's called the Bulls Legacy Collection. And will be released over six drops, each token celebrating the team's six iconic championship wins between 1991 and 1998. So basically, like they're celebrating the Jordan era, essentially. They're still stuck like 20 years ago, but they're celebrating the Jordan era. If you're interested in that, you can probably go purchase the NFT drops, and maybe they'll be worth a lot of money in the future. Two million is enough to create 100K a year. Uh, that's like 5%. I think two million is enough. Like, you're, you're, because all you're really looking at, CC, is essentially like a five percent uh, yield, and five percent five percent yield isn't that much to ask for. 
last video about VAT was 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 that mean it will reach or won't reach? I didn't. I mean, like, I think VAT will reach a dollar if Bitcoin reaches a hundred thousand. Look, you're banking on Bitcoin going super high for VET to reach those dollar prices. Hey, Moonshine Swigs, what's up? For, yeah, for like for big for VET to reach those prices, you are definitely banking on Bit, uh, Bitcoin going really high. So you're looking at the hash rate and you're looking at what regulations actually does. So I guess like paying attention on the 28th wouldn't be a bad idea. I, I don't really think anything's going to happen on the 28th, but something could happen that could easily move it both ways. 100K can do 50K a year. Not consistently. You're not going to get 50% returns a year on like regular assets without risking a lot. Because like if you're trying to get 50% APY a year, you're going to be risking a lot as well. Uh, do you think BTC tomorrow will have crash? I don't really think so. And I don't really know why it would have crash. Do you think trading VET for Adam is a good call? I wouldn't. Um, I don't really hold Adam. But I mean, Adam could be like, Adam could be one of those like less talked about coins that's really undervalued because like it's a, it's a pretty good interoperability protocol, but there's just not much talk about it. You know, the thing is like VET to $1 would be awesome, but I don't know if it would really be insane. 50% APR one month, then the whole coin would go to zero. Yeah, look, I mean, haven't you seen those coins that are like 50% that are like 36,000 APR per year and it lasts for like a week and then it dies? We've all seen that. Cake pay 98% seems as solid as the rest. I, yeah, yeah. Two million is a heck of a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, like most people never accumulate, I mean, like $2 million in their lives. Like most careers, they'll pay like, if you if you like look at the length of the entire career, they only pay like $2.5 million over the entire course of the career. What is tipping me towards Adam Moore's yield farming opportunities? I see. Well, I mean, 150K USD is like maybe like two years of salary for like an average worker. Probably a little more than that in the United States. <clears throat> oh, okay, 150K is like two years of like salary for a regular white collar worker in the United States. Blue collar doesn't make quite as much most of the time. The ET at a dollar would be insane. That would be pretty cool. Why wouldn't it be insane? Everyone would be hoping for VET. But like, if you look at uh, crypto trajectory, and the thing is, Benjamin, it's already been at 25 cents before. So based on the fact that it's been at 25 cents before, I don't think it'd be crazy. I mean, it'd be really, really nice, but I don't think it'd be crazy. So I think there is a chance that you guys can get really, really rich if Bitcoin goes to 100K. So you better be uh, praying that Bitcoin gets to 100K because if Bitcoin doesn't get to 100K, you're not getting that VET a dollar. And then the thing is like, if, the, if Bitcoin gets to a dollar, a lot of you that invest in Cardano or Pol uh, Cardano or any of these other coins will get pretty rich as well. My goal is to make 100K from dividends in crypto a year and another I see. Well, the thing is like Levy Warren's like, if you've actually like followed Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren, Elizabeth Warren was like, Elizabeth Warren has been seriously anti-bank for a long time. Like, it's kind of weird with Warren because she's like anti-big banks and she's anti-crypto, which is kind of strange, honestly, because usually it's one or the other. Like, uh, like she's been like, she's been really heavy handed on banks. Like during the crash, she really wanted to level, like, like, like if it was up to Elizabeth Warren during the crash, she would have wanted to levy like huge, huge penalties on the banks. But you know what? She's not the only woman in, she's not the only person in Congress and the other congressmen weren't going to go for that. How realistic is it for VET to reach $3 sometime in 2022? Um, I mean, I don't think it's going to, I don't really know. Like $3 would be awesome, but I wouldn't bet on it. Yeah. The thing is like VET, like VET reached 26 cents. So if you were like, if you were going to make millions of dollars at a dollar, like 26 cents was a huge chunk of money for you guys as well. She thinks crypto is from banks. I mean, that depends if you believe in that theory or not. I don't believe in that theory. But yeah, like Elizabeth Warren is not friendly towards banks. Like during the crash, she wanted to impose like heavy sanctions on banks, which I kind of agree with actually, because they're the ones that screwed it up. BTC isn't, BTC isn't directly coupled with the NYSE, never has. Hey, Paulino, I. BTC has never been coupled with the NYSE, directly one to one. Like BTC is affected by the NYSE, like BTC is actually affected by the Dow when the Dow takes a huge plunge. So if the Dow like drops like 2000 points or whatever, yeah, in a day, sure. BTC will be uh, affected, but not until then. 
Yeah, if you took profits at 27 cents, it's really nice. To hit a dollar this bull run, I'd sell half my VET and hold the other half for the next bull run. Uh, I would probably sell more than half, honestly, because like it could go above a dollar, honestly, but if it's like so much money for you, I'd sell a lot of it. I had to withdraw four times on Binance deposit my money to another crypto wallet. Yeah, look, if you're not actually doing KYC on Binance, it's going to get harder and harder for you. I think eventually Binance is going to completely shut off the non-KYC segment. Like, I, I, I mean, the way that regulations are coming, like CZ has been trying to resist regulations, but if they get a new CEO, which they will soon, like that CEO is going to be a lot more regulatory compliant than CZ. And like, I think Binance is really just not going to be that viable for non-KYC people. OMI is still not that up. Don't know what to think about it. Invest it. I'm actually bullish on OMI long term. Like they need to, they actually need to announce more licensing deals. And I'm pretty sure they have them. They just haven't announced them. Because like OMI went up like crazy when they announced the Marvel thing. WeChat getting banned from China. That's really strange because WeChat's like actually based in China. But like, you know, the thing about them banning WeChat in China though, I mean, like that's going to screw WeChat obviously in Tencent. The thing is like people use WeChat to spread information around that the government doesn't want to have around. Even though they can control WeChat, WeChat communication lines, it's still like too much of a risk for the Chinese government. But the Chinese government, like Xi Jinping is going to have to realize sooner or later that he can't keep everything up. Mandate, yeah. I would agree uh, with Warren on levying heavy fines on banks when they screw up all for greed. The problem is the politicians get enough money from banks that they throw us on the wolves. The thing is, I don't think Warren, I don't, I think, I think Elizabeth Warren is one of those that probably doesn't get that much from banks because like the banks hate Elizabeth Warren and she hates the banks. But the thing is, like I said, she's not the only person in Congress and the majority doesn't agree with her. Tencent, that's when alts may decouple from Bitcoin. So many good licenses through already. Sure. I mean, Shiba, Shiba Inu, man. Shiba Inu, like it could pump up all of a sudden, but it won't maintain that. Is WeChat really getting banned in China? I might actually have to like, find some way else to actually talk to my sister. No, no, China's Tencent suspends. Um, so they suspended new registrations for WeChat. So the Chinese internet giant Tencent said Tuesday that it had temporarily suspended new user registrations for its hugely popular uh, app WeChat. Raising fears of new regulatory pressures, even as it insisted the outage was a result of a technical upgrade, uh, Tencent said in a statement that the shutdown, which affected only new users and groups registering for the app, would be over by early August with a fix to its security technology. So they, uh, it's down, but the Ch China hasn't banned WeChat. I mean, like, uh, they basically just stopped new registrations. Any price predictions? for the Not really. I mean, like, most of my price predictions are still the same for the end of the year. Uh, I do not have an OnlyFans, no. Isn't that like a softcore porn site? I don't really do OnlyFans. Have you heard about this thing called SafeMoon? A lot of people call it a scam. Yes, we've been talking about SafeMoon for a long time. I don't know if it's a scam, but it's definitely a pump and dump. Cake still promising a purchase? Um, I think it's risky, but it still can be pretty profitable. I, I personally think all BSC projects are risky right now. I mean, Fent, look at how many hacks and uh, rug pulls that have been on cake. That should answer your question. But there have been a lot of coins that have just shot straight up. So do you want to risk being rug pulled for a chance to get like a lot of money? That's really the question you should ask yourself. I don't know, like land deals. I don't really know if you can say if uh, cake is a solid citizen. I, I can't really say like anything on BSC right now is a solid citizen. I mean, like we thought like, uh, what was that one thing? We thought Rune was a solid citizen and then it like, We saw we thought we thought Rune was a solid citizen and then like, you know, they got hacked three times. So it's gonna be like I don't know if I can say that anything about uh I don't know if I can say anything about BSC right now. Definitely can't say much about BSC. There's gonna be look, there's gonna be a lot of pulls on deck dexes and stuff, and I think that's gonna actually prevent a lot of people from using that stuff. Total rug pulls? That's true. There there are there are uh there are more rug pulls. There are actually more rug pulls on um uni but they're not like people don't really hear about them because they're generally pretty small the cake rug pulls are like not the cake the, the the bsc rug pulls are fairly big yeah i can like definitely in a bear market i'm going to see even more rug pulls because like people are going to be wanting to take all their money out and you're going to see a lot of stuff you see in black stock block stock they will launch in september it's some gold back crypto 
I have not seen that. I mean, unless they have huge gold reserves, I don't know if I believe that, which is a better investment for now between Polygon. You know, I actually think Cardano probably, but like they're both going to be pretty good. But I think Cardano because they have because the hype for their smart contract. But Polygon will grow because more more projects are coming onto Polygon. You need rug pulls were bigger. Peeps forgot. Yeah, but that was quite a while ago. It's been around longer, I think. Just checked in Alien Worlds. It rebounded a lot. These games are going to go up and down. Like I, I do think these blockchain games are going to be really popular. Isn't Paxos gold? Yeah, Paxos gold is gold back, but it's also kind of stable. Like Paxos gold is literally gold. Like it's a, t it's basically gold certificates. That's what Paxos gold is. You can actually take your Paxos gold, go to a gold exchange, and exchange it for gold. It is actually gold. It's not just gold back. It is literally gold. Uh, Polygon is about to announce the biggest news ever. Their CEO tweeted it. I hope so. I mean, like. I hope it's not just a buy the, another buy the rumor, sell the news thing, because that could definitely be possible as well. When you do those like giant announcements, it does leave, it, you have to admit, it does leave space for disappointment. You think MTV coin will blow up? I don't know if anyone, does anyone even watch MTV anymore? Maybe. TLM went to like 8 cents and it's 30 now, just went back up, I see. You don't have engine, get it? You're holding. Yeah, I think like, I actually do think Polygon is going to compete pretty hard against Engine though. But Engine does have a couple of games on it that are pretty nice. Uni had some uh, 500 million plus and hack. They did. That was a couple of months ago. I think people have just forgotten about it because BSCs had one like every two weeks or every week. I don't think that was, tr I, it's not really a partnership with Google. Like uh, Google is using some kind of data with it, but it's not like uh, their server technology, but it's not true partnership. MTV is multivac. Oh, I thought you meant MTV, the channel. Yeah, I don't really know that much about Multivac. I was like, does anyone watch that channel anymore? It was popular when I was a kid, but that was like 25 years ago. Uh, what about SPS? I haven't really looked at SPS. Look, the thing is like, what I've realized about like most, like most partnerships that claim to be with Google is like they're using some kind of Google server technology or Google is like somehow like involved in the technology, but it's not true a true Google partnership. But Polygon presented at Google like two days ago. Yeah, but you know, like it, that might have just been a speech or something. Um, I don't think there's a true Google partnership. Like where Google's actually like they're using each other. Yeah, see like Google Cloud now prevents, uh, pr pr uh, now provides blockchain insights for Polygon. That's not a real partnership. That's basically like Google Cloud basically like has Polygon news. That's really what it uh, that's really what it means. It's not a true partnership where like they're using each other's product, like where Google's using Polygon project products. Are you saying to sell? I'm not saying to sell BNB, but what I'm saying is like uh, Binance is severely restricting uh, non KYC withdrawals. So if you're a non KYC user on Binance, you will only be able to withdraw 0.06. Bitcoin per day from Binance. So eventually it's just going to become not viable. Uh, what if Matic coin has a payment in Google Play Store? I don't see that happening anytime soon. I mean, you could, you probably could do it via card right now, but like the car, what the card does, is you just sell Matic for cash and then they get the cash. But as for Google actually accepting uh, Matic uh, directly and then holding it, I don't think so. Now, Google might actually hold it in their treasury. That might be the big play. I mean, they don't right now, but they could in the future. But them actually accepting the payment, I don't think it's happening. Any news about VeChain? What do you think about Bitcoin will continue to get higher? VeChain's like more development through uh, 2.0. There's like this thing with VBlocks like uh, coming under the new infrastructure. Like more things are migrating and eventually there's like soon they're going to have a vote on it. I mean, sure. I mean, everyone hopes that their crypto works with Amazon or Google. No, no, it's not only for Binance US. It's for Binance.com. I don't know if, like, Binance.us is that ridiculous $100 uh, per day restriction, which is, like, ridiculous. But this is, like, for non-KYC people on Binance.com. If you are KYC'd, then that doesn't apply to you. But if you're not KYC'd on Binance.com, you can't withdraw more than 0 0.06 BTC per day. I think Blocks mentioned is earlier from the same company. Maybe, maybe. I, I don't really know much about them. Uh, Zilliqa, or you mean Zilliqa or Zilliqa? I, I'm not really sure. Zilliqa, I haven't heard too much news from. When you expect countries to start rolling out stable coins, like, um, I think Nigeria is making their own coin right now. I really don't, yeah, like I, like you, I don't really expect them to change anything in the crypto world. 
uh, know your customer. So you, you, it's basically uh, I like the, you have to be ID'd. Um, you have to have like an identification on Binance to withdraw more than that. You can't just sign up, not tell them who you are, and then randomly withdraw. Best USA's exchange right now. I still say Binance.us, but I'm actually using Coinbase for cash outs for cash. Like fiat withdrawals on Binance.us are extremely crippled, so you can't really withdraw that much on Binance.us for fiat withdrawals. But for regular trading, I would actually say Binance.us. For fiat withdrawals, I just go with Coinbase. Yeah, I mean, look, look Binance is going to be – look, eventually all these big exchanges are really just not going to be viable for non-KYC. You're going to have to do KYC sooner or later. Like KYC is going to be industry standard um, probably within a few years because like non-KYC will be, will be restricted to DEXs. And like smaller exchanges, which can actually screw you at any time. Um, I wouldn't be holding USDT long term, anyways, because it's not really an investment. It just stays at a dollar. I would, and I would much, much rather hold USDC over USDT. Kraken's also pretty good. Crypto.com's also there. Bitrex, but their interface is awful. KuCoin's not really a U.S. exchange. You know, Tower. The thing is, like after people, after they go after Binance, I'm almost sure they're going to go after KuCoin. Because like, like, it doesn't make sense for them to actually attack Binance and then not do anything about KuCoin. Because it's the same thing. KuCoin's just not as big, so they're not focusing on KuCoin. Uh, recommendation to stake Matic. And, I mean, just stake, you can actually just stake in the official Matic wallet, can't you? Why do they want you to be a KYC so bad? Because governments be, want to be able to track your transactions. That's the, that, that's the whole basis. They'll make up like random... Look, they'll be they'll they'll make up random BS excuses on why they want to uh, do that, but like realistically, the government wants to be able to track your transactions. That's why they want you to do KYC so bad. Anything like if they tell you anything else, they're making up BS essentially. And some of it is to prevent lo money laundering and tax evasion, though. New exchange because like if you're not KYC, you can easily launder money, especially if they don't have limits. New exchanges currently in testing at the moment called Bullish UI. I see. I will fend OD. I will say that most UIs for most uh, for a lot of exchanges are trash. Like programmers do not know how to write UIs. Like Bitrex's exchange, their interface is still trash after like so many years. Wouldn't that make the privacy coins go up in value? It might, but you know, Rakita, my guess is they're going to attack privacy coins by squeezing the liquidity. If you don't have liquidity for a coin, the coin's kind of worthless. Um, I do think like they're going to try to squeeze privacy features or privacy coins by cutting off the liquidity. And that's going to be a big blow to privacy coins. Uh, right now, like they, right now their plate's too full. And like, you know, the government moves very slowly on this stuff. So like they're not attacking the privacy coins yet, but eventually they'll attack the privacy coins. Is Uniswap and Exodus swaps KYC held? Um, I mean, I don't really know about Exodus. I mean, Uniswap's a DEX, so it shouldn't be KYC. What's going to happen to DeFi? DeFi is going to get, DeFi is going to, they're going to attempt to regulate DeFi for sure. But the land deals, here's the thing. Most DeFi isn't really de decentralized anyway. They just call it DeFi. Sound cool. What will be this top three medal winning countries in the Olympics? US, China, and maybe Russian Federation. US and China are going to be one and two. It's the third one that's up for debate. Isn't that Avalanche? I actually like Avalanche. I think my favorite DeFi is AVE though. Yeah, the top three medal-winning countries usually isn't up for debate. It's always like U.S., China, and uh, Russia. It's It's been that way for a long time. What's the biggest Polygon news? Um, I mean, more products are coming on a Polygon all the time, but there's no especially really huge news today. What's up with JPM coin? JPM coin is going to get used in the JPM network, which is already huge. I don't think other – I really don't think other banks are going to adopt JPM coin. Could be wrong, though. USA is not doing so well with the medals this year. Yeah, their gymnastic their gymnastics team basically got shut out. But the US always like but the US is going to be top 3 for sure. Probably still number 1. The only time China beat the US in total medal count is when like the Olympics were actually in China. Ample AMPL and AVE fourth has govern as governance. Uh. Why doesn't India do better in the Olympics? So, here's the way it goes. As a country rises in economic power, and dominance, 
Like, they generally win more medals in the Olympics. India's still got a couple of decades to go before they really rise up in economic power and dominance. Also, like, India, I, I don't think India participates well in a lot of the sports. Bulls Legacy Collection is sold out already? Dang, man. People are going crazy. Like, dude, collectors are going crazy over these NFTs. They must think they're going to be, like, really, really hot in a couple of years. And they could be right about that. They definitely could be right about that. My Twitter? Okay. They definitely could be right about that. You think with such a huge population, you have more chance to have more. But yeah, it also like, but then it also depends like how much money the country has, and, like how much development they do. Like they're great at like, India's great in like maybe like cricket and some other like horse riding and maybe other stuff. But yeah. We can, we finalize one of the biggest game changes for Polygon. This would be more profound than Maddox expansion to Polygon and we'll set Polygons. Okay. We don't really know what it is though. Like, Hopefully, cool, but what is it exactly? May I mean, uh, there's not much to say about it. There's just not much to say about it. I, I don't really know what to even say about this. You getting rid of the rid of the admin keys? Nah, that's probably not going to happen. But I guess with less facilities and top tier training, you can't reach potential. Yeah, like you can't like you. And also like you need top tier competition to reach top tier com potential. Like the best ways for like the best ways for like developing countries is to send their athletes to like really developed countries, and then have them come back to represent for the Olympics. I don't really know about like, I mean, for athletes, they definitely do like pairings. But that doesn't always work. Did the one-child policy work for China to control overpopulation? Yeah, it did. But you know what really controlled overpopulation? Like China rising in economic dominance. Because like they've actually lifted the one-child policy. It's been gone for a couple of years now. And people just aren't having more kids because it costs way too much to actually have a kid. So a lot of people just aren't having kids. Not buying junk until we break about 40K and hold above. Other, This is all set up for another dump. We're probably going to swing between like 35 and 40 for a while. But right now, there are some pretty good deals on coins. You're basically just waiting until coins get more expensive to buy them. Is there somewhere that has a list of KYC compliant crypto and non-KYC? Um, not really. I don't think so. Like, and KYC really, like, KYC really has more to do with the exchanges and not so much the cryptos themselves. I think Elrond's new Myer exchange going to be a game changer? Maybe. I actually like what they did with the names because uh, those both uh, Elrond and Mayer are from Middle Earth. You see, like like Sauron was a Mayer from um, Middle Earth. You see India doing something like a one child policy. I, I don't really know if that would work in their country, honestly. Remember, China was a totalitarian dictatorship with India supposed to be like the world's biggest democracy. USA does not need a one child policy. Because, like, people don't really, like, have that many kids in the U.S. anyways, for the most part. Like, the U.S. doesn't average that many kids per family. Look, it costs a lot of money to bring up kids in, like, developed countries. That's why with develop, developing nations, they don't grow in population that fast. You know, instead of calling it the Meyer Exchange, they, just, they should have called it the Sauron Exchange. If exchange requires KYC, then those are approved. And if these doesn't, then it is not approved. Yeah. What do you think of Ergo? I haven't heard of that one in a while. I still think it's a good coin, but I haven't heard of it in a while. I haven't heard news from it in a while. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, coins depend a lot on exchanges. Good afternoon, Eric. Good afternoon. Hard to get the Omi drops? Yeah. I mean, if they sell out really fast, it's going to be really hard to get them. Yep. Please smash the likes, guys.
love Algorand staking on Ledger. As long as you have coins in your Ledger, you get rewarded automatically. Don't need to delegate or anything. Cool, cool. Hey, Gaming for Life. Every government wants the tax money, so just pay tax when they say to pay. What else can you do? Yeah, the thing is, like, the thing is, like, people who are wanting to use it for money laundering and tax evasion, they're going to be very upset in a couple of years because, like, realistically, like, the government's going to set clamps on them. You're not going to be able to money launder or tax evade with crypto. Do you think they'll re recover? I'm um, not really, yeah, I'm not touching Bonley. I think Bond, I just don't trust him right now. What's the support level we're trying to break? Uh, you mean the resistance level? 40K. It's called Miami Coin and Coinbase will list it. That'd be interesting. I don't really know how that would work with like Fed, the feds though. Later, Michael. I'm happy with my kin Jim Fetch AI got listed on Coinbase. Nice. The thing is, I do think eventually Matic will at least break into the top 10. I don't know about top 5, but top 10. A lot of crypto tubers disappointed me a lot today on how they reacted to the Amazon news that denied the BTC rumors. A lot of them really thought it was going to happen just because it was a job offer. Yeah, look, they essentially just made it up themselves. And they, I don't know if they tricked themselves enough to believe it or they just did it for views. But regardless, that was not going to happen. What is your thoughts on Dogecoin now? I mean, it's still a meme coin. I just don't really see anything. Uh, let me actually look up Miami coin. I can't see, people can't post links in chat. I, I, I'm not surprised because the city of Miami has been extremely bullish uh, for cryptocurrency. So Miami's getting its own coin. This is from like a month or two ago. They're probably eventually going to make it, sure. Why AMZ news news now? Chico Crypto was talking about it from a month ago. It's not really news. Look, Amazon's not going to like. Uh, people are just disappointed that Amazon said they're not ready to accept crypto yet, but that wasn't a surprise at all. I can't wait for Sunday swap. Oh, for a Cardano, yeah. But we're still waiting for smart contracts on Cardano. Other people want to trade their Bitcoin to buy diapers off Amazon. So first of all, no one was actually going to use Bitcoin on Amazon. It's just like they just wanted the pump effect from Amazon accepting crypto. But that was never really going to happen. In Miami, I mean, that's probably not, I mean, that's you're talking about it like a decades long or centuries long thing for Miami to go underwater. Eventually, with the ocean level rise, a lot of the city will go underwater, especially if the ice caps start melting. But you're talking about a very long term thing and people don't really think about that. The mayor of Miami said they're going to try to bring a lot of miners to Miami. Would not surprise me. Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, hopefully like this month or next month, but I'm not really sure. They're going to have to, I don't really know when the community is going to actually going to vote on it. A lot of people are actually are moving their apps over to the new architecture, uh, but I don't really know when they're actually going to move everything. Really don't know. But if you use BTC on AMZ, maybe you don't have to pay taxes. No, that's not how it works. I think they're, look, I think they're going to have regulations for that. I think like people would, are, who are thinking, people who are trying to think of every way to escape taxes are going to be very, very disappointed because they're going to plug up all the holes. I hear there is a moon wobble happening over the next 10 years and it'll have effect, take, affect king tides. I don't know. I haven't really heard about that. Weather patterns, I'm not doing great on. The math doesn't make sense to me. The volume of ice that is at the polar cap is not enough to provide volume heated needed to cover all the oceans of the world at thickness they're predicting. It's enough. I mean, they're not going to cover the world, but it's enough to raise the sea levels like, you know, 10, 20 feet, which will actually inundate some of the cities. They're not, it's not going to cover the entire world, no. Was this BTC pump a bear trap? I don't think so. I think we just like are at a slightly higher level right now. I mean, we still haven't passed 40K. El I did hear that Elrond's going to be partnering with Miami. That's actually pretty exciting. Maybe they'll make, they might actually make a Miami coin on Elrond, which would be interesting. 
my YouTube notifications never work for your channel. Yeah, follow me on Twitter or Patreon, man. Follow me on Twitter. I, I always post when I'm actually going to stream on Twitter. But that's life. I make exponential growth. You shouldn't care either way. That's true. Look, if you pay a lot of taxes, that means you're actually making a lot of money. And the thing is, like, most people worry about taxes that they'll, that they'll actually never have to pay. 20 feet in the Gulf would put my city under. Yeah, like... You know, even if the even if the water level like uh, like climbs a foot or two, that's gonna put like that's gonna actually put a lot of places in danger. Yeah, I, I do think like regulation is gonna have to happen before global adoption in crypto. I don't think you're gonna get global adoption without regulations. Yes, I'm saying about twenty feet all over the world. My Twitter username. This is my Twitter username. I live in Florida. Sea level rises is, is, isn't here. I mean, you can easily see that like the sea level in the Everglades is a little higher than it was maybe like 50 years ago. That's not hard to see. Omi never, uh, almost never moved with Bitcoin. See? And if you live in the Maldives, obviously you can see like the sea levels have been rising. A lot of them even come up with some conspiracy theories. Look, look, ultimate, like they do it for views. I mean, like conspiracy theories attract a lot of viewers. Does like, are those things ever true? Most, mostly no, but like it does attract a lot of viewers. I did not hear about the Saudi Arabia city they're trying to build called the line. I mean, I only know about Akon city. I don't really know what the hell is happening with that. I mean, with with Southern Florida, maybe, but if you actually look at like islands in the Pacific, like the Maldives, it's definitely like because the oceans are rising. Also, if you look at Louisiana, like New Orleans, it's easily, you, you can easily see it's because the ocean's rising. The Army Corps of Engineers bring that big lake into the Everglades. Do you see ICP end of the year? I don't know about ICP. Like, I still don't really know which direction ICP is going. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna buy ICP. I don't know if it's overvalued or not. It's a city which will be straight line across, no cars, multi layered. Nice, nice. Well, I mean, New Orleans has definitely been sinking, but it's been like. The water has been creeping up on New Orleans for like a century now. Yes, it is below sea level. But the thing is like the, the ocean's been rising. The, the ocean has been rising around New Orleans. That's why they get inundated a lot more often now. It's a city that will be straight line across. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually interested in, I'm actually quite interested in all these crypto cities. I, I want to see them take form. I definitely want all these crypto cities to take form. I, I'm very interested to see how this works. Very, very interested to see how this works. Because I have my doubts that if it'll work or not. So I want to see if they can actually build one of these damn things. Because I think it'd be very, very interesting if they could actually build one of these things. New Orleans and the rest is how the thing between all. Are you bullish on the ICX? Do you see it hitting at least previous all-time high this year? I think it will, but it's going to take time. Also, if you look at the Maldives and other islands in the Pacific, it's easy to see that the water has been creeping up over the last couple of decades. Probably answer them more than what's hard for uh, asking about. How did you get started in crypto? Uh, my, like my mom and also like several of my cousins were in crypto. I've been keeping track of it before then, but they actually bought in. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm in cage. You can do the rest of it. Oh, all right. You are. Because they can sell them for a lot of short-term profit gaining for life. People don't really look at long-term effects. As long as they can make short-term profit, they'll build them. Oh, she's not really into crypto anymore. She still has an Ethereum stuck in a wallet somewhere that we don't really know where the hell it is, but like she's not really into crypto anymore. I think for her, it was just like a short-term investment type of thing that everyone got excited about. The thing is like when banks build the high rises, they plan to sell them very quick. So they don't really have to deal with it like 20 years later. Hey, Sam S. Not too much. We've been just talking about like regulations and then Binance restricting non-KYC trades. Uh, that's the thing. Like, you know, like the, the banks don't really look at the long-term implications of the high rises because they're, they're not going to own them when that actually happens. Thanks for the donation, man. I mean, we're getting a lot more frequent, like severe hurricanes and like weather events now than we were like, you know, 20, 30 years ago. How do you see the regulated world of crypto? You know, I, I think like regulation is going to be pretty much necessary for mass adoption. So I don't think it's a bad thing. Some people really don't like it, but most of those people are crypto purists. And since I'm not a crypto purist, I don't really care. Um, yeah, I, I definitely see like the regulated world of crypto as like a good thing in the future. It, it will become another economic market, kind of like the stock market. Uh, but the thing is like, you're, you're going to need regulations. You, you definitely need regulations for mass adoption to drive up price. I don't have much of an opinion on tech lead. I don't think he scammed people, but I don't really listen to him anyways. I, I mean, like, I think he's just another, I think he's like most other crypto influencers. And he used, obviously he uses cachet of working at Google and uh, Facebook before to like uh, get uh, followers. Need to weed all the shit out of meme coins. Yeah, that's not going to happen because like once you, once some meme coins die, other meme coins are going to rise up to take their place. Will it reduce manipulation? I don't really know, but it will, hopefully it will like reduce the number of like rug pull scams. I think DeFi is going to be smacked by it pretty hard though. I do think like DeFi is going to be smacked by it. I hope regulation helps that issue. Eh, maybe. I mean, I think it'll be hard for, I mean, like regulations by country though. It's not like, it's not going to be like a blanket for the entire world. No, I'm not going to pump MM. I think MM is a crap coin. I don't pump crap coins. I mean, look, he can start a coin if he wants to, but I'm not going to buy into his coin because I don't really see a point in his coin. I mean, it might be hit for him to make money. Why is VeChain getting into DeFi if there's no main thing supply chain tracking? Everyone's getting into DeFi. That's why. Look, the thing is, v -Chain, the VeChain team itself, I don't think they're going to do much with DeFi. It's like the third party developers are going to do DeFi. I don't think MM token really has any purpose. I mean, didn't technically just make it to make fun of the crypto industry? I mean, like, what the hell, man? I mean, if you want to buy it, that's if you want to buy it, that's your that, that that's your own decision. But I don't really care much for it. I don't really see what purpose it actually serves. Kind of like uh, you know all these like baby Dogecoin and all these baby Dogecoins and crap like that. Do you see any higher rate of channel growth this week since BDC? Not really. I think it, I, I really think like channel, like higher channel growth has to really depend on Bitcoin going like, you know, 60,000, like 50, 60,000. Like people really shouldn't buy into these, like you should, people shouldn't buy into these YouTube uh, tokens because what the hell is their purpose? It's like, uh, it's like, um, you know, it's like dink doink. 
Like he literally made it because it was a joke. So I think it's the same thing with MM coin. Like these coins really don't serve any purpose. Because DeFi, I think, kind of thrives on like, I think uh, DeFi kind of thrives on non-regulation. And I think a lot of a lot of the reasons people are into DeFi is for these like 3,000, 4,000% ROIs within a week. I think regulation is going to cut a lot of it off because they're not like, it's not so much speculation. It's like, they're going to restrict the creators on like the creators of the DeFi uh, on what they can do. So like the massive, massive weekly ROI is probably going to go down. People seem to think they can't make it off. A 5,000 Gucci bag. I mean, it's basically a, a, a expensive Gucci bag is just to show status for the most part, but that's actually a physical item. It's obvious he made MM to make, yeah, I mean, like, he basically made MM to make fun of crypto. Like, most, a lot of these long, a long, a lot of long-term cryptos, like, a Gucci bag isn't, like, a pump and dump scheme. Like, these type of, these type of coins are obviously the pump and dump things. Like, Tech Lead almost said so much himself. He could he could still rug pull sometime down the line. I don't think he scammed people, but there's no point in there's no point in buying MM coin. Here's a quick math, and of course I would be uh, I don't know about Pi Network. Like, why would I buy MM coin? Like, what's the point of it? Just to hold MM coin? I don't really care about that. Sure, he's open about the whole project, but again, why the hell would I buy it? It's just like, why would I why would I buy Baby Doge? There's no point in me buying it, except for hoping for a pump and dump. And I don't really participate in pump and dumps. There's evidence he already might have pulled someone. He might have. Look, I don't really care about tech lead stuff. I don't watch him. So th why would I pump his coin? No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I don't do. I don't really do coin pumps. What's the news regarding Binance and non-KYC withdrawals? Uh, no, it's not for the U.S. exchange. The It's for Binance.com. It's for Binance.com. Um, and they only, they're going to only let you withdraw 0 0.06 BTC per day. Look, I actually... I tend to pr promote coins that have a practical purpose. Like crap coins like that are, are basically coins that like, yeah, you could buy $100 worth of it and see if it goes to 10000 and then get out once it gets to 10000 essentially. Those are the only purpose I have for those coins. I don't think anyone here would help pump it. I'm sure not pumping a coin I know nothing about. Yeah, look, people here aren't going to pump a coin that they don't really give a crap about. It's not really a long-term coin. It, look, it's a it, it's a coin like created by. It's basically a coin created by a YouTuber. That's what MM coin is. It's a, it's a lot like Dink Doink, like created by uh, Logan Paul or whatever. So all these YouTuber coins are pretty similar. I have uh, Halifax and the new building being built on the harbor up three feet higher than the old buildings. Well, yeah, because they know the sea level is rising, so they're preparing for that. I mean, if you look at uh, coin market cap, to me, like all these like. Look, to me, all these like YouTuber coins are basically pump and dump coins. They might not be a scam because they tell you exactly what it is, but people should still buy it. And you can see from right here, like it, it dipped down from like, you know, it dipped down from 219. I mean, it looks like it's stabilized. But I don't really, I'm not going to buy coins that are made. I'm not going to buy or promote coins that are essentially made for making fun of the crypto industry. I don't really see a point in that. 
I can, if I wanted that, I could just go to, uh, if I really wanted a crypto community, that's kind of fun. I would just go to the Dogecoin community. There's always that. Five K before they just must be feeling the regulation heat. Maybe. Like the Dogecoin community is honestly like one of the few communities in crypto that's really not in it for the money. I was part of the Doge community for a while. It was fun. All these look, all these communities are the same. I'm not going to like join a bunch of like parroting cheerleaders who to promote, to promote the coin. I really like Cardano. Cardano actually serves a purpose. I mean, like there are projects running on Card. There are projects that are coming on to Cardano. He said meme tokens are the future because how many noobs are flooding in with money to spend? Eventually, those will be pumped and dumped by the to buy real projects. Look, a lot of those noobs are just going to end up... Look, look, a lot of those noobs are essentially just going to like lose all their money in these meme coins. Because they're, they're just basically... They're, like these meme coins are going to be like fast pump and dump cycles. Like when they go up, they're going to come, they're going to come crashing back down. Yeah, but realistically there's a 100 th there's there's a lot of social tokens. It's look it was created by a YouTuber to make fun of the crypto community. It's not, it's not one of those projects that I'm really interested in. I don't have too many thoughts about Nimic. I also realized that like desperate shills come in at the same time to promote a token. Like all of you million dollars, a million coin tokens, people basically just came in at the same time to shill your coin. We can all notice that. It's the same pattern as like other crap coins where a bunch of shills basically come in at the same time to show their coins, probably with duplicate accounts. People don't get that Doge circulating supply. I think it's controlled by 30 wallet. Look, we know Doge is extremely volatile. I mean, Doge literally got pumped up by like, pumped up like five, six X by an Elon Musk tweet. We know, look, most of us in here know what we're getting into if we want to buy Doge. Most of us probably don't buy Doge, but we know what we're getting into. Look, you guys are acting the same way as a bunch of those like shit coin chillers, essentially. People, a bunch of people like team up, a bunch of people agree to come try to invade a stream, promote their shit token in hopes that other people will buy it. No one's going to buy your coin from here. That's exactly what you are doing. You are raiding for a price pump and it's not going to work in this particular chat because no one's going to listen to your crap. There are coins that are actually being used in the industry right now. MM is not one of them. People know what MM is, man. Basically, you're, look, you're making your own coin look like shit. That's what you're doing. When a, per, a person that makes it in crypto is a scam. I still like VET, man. Because, like, they're actively being used by Walmart China and plus a lot of other, uh, plus a lot of other companies.
they're not going to make all cryptos illegal. Like coins like MM coin, they might actually make illegal. Coins that actually have a purpose are not going to be illegal. Yes, Binance is re severely restricting non-KYC. Uh, they're only allowing you uh, allowing non-KYC accounts to withdraw 0 0.06 BTC per uh, per day. You can tell someone posted. Yeah, basically they're just spam. They're basically just spamming YouTube channels because they're desperate to show their shit coin. That's all it is. Yeah, you know, spamming your shit coin in this channel really isn't gonna get any uh, positive publicity. No, TechWeed is essentially the same thing as Logan Paul at this point. He's a, he, he might be a former Silicon Valley worker, but he created his own meme coin to make fun of crypto. It's a crap coin. That's all it is. All new. And especially, I know it's a crap coin when a bunch of shillers come in the chat at the same time trying to, pro uh, trying to promote the coin. They're basically desperately trying to shill their crap coin. That's all it is. You are exactly here for buys and pumps. That's what all shillers do. You're not, look, first of all, I've only seen you here once. You're not a regular viewer and all you're here, all you're here to do is try to desperately pump your shit coin. That's all you're trying to do right now. I don't really know what happened with Hinman. It doesn't look like much happened with Hinman today. It really doesn't look like here much happened with Shinman. Uh, you guys are like hopeless, man. Should uh There isn't China's not banning WeChat. No, I'm not joining your shitty Discord. And stop spamming my channel with your crap. It's obvious one of you desperate morons posted a link in Discord and all of you guys tried to spam here. There isn't, look, I, I don't really know, because like, well, one, because no one really cares about ETC. That's probably the main reason. I mean, I mean, like, main reason is no one really cares about ETC. I don't even know why that coin exists anymore, honestly. I mean, there is talk about ETH miners that can go over to ETC. That might be possible, but I don't really see why ETC is even a thing. What do you mean an Oro? If you're talking about an Oracle, that's basically a price pinger for DeFi. I don't really know what an Oral Cal is. I I actually like AVE. That's one of the few I like in terms of like uh that I actually like AVE in terms of DeFi. It's one of the few that's actually listed as cross chain.
Look, these look the, the crap coin shillers are a dime a dozen. They're basically trying to pump their coin and then dump people at the top. They're scoundrels. I get some uh, feeling uh, uh, these guys brought him above 200 and need to dump their bags. And that's, pro that's probably all they're about right now. They probably bought MM at the top and now they're like desperate to like get their money back or whatever. Because realistically, it doesn't, it's not going anywhere. It doesn't have any kind of purpose. I don't really see like a, another huge crypto crash. We could go back down to 30,000, but I hope we bottomed at 45. What is your view on Shiba Inu? I think it's a meme coin. They tried to pump it up with Shiba Swap, but that didn't really work. I mean, it could pump up in the future, but it's a short-term thing. Well, I mean, the, I never really believed in the whole uh, phone mining thing, but it did actually get a lot of public notice, though. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll, I might be back later tonight. Like and subscribe and hit that bell notifications button. Thank you. And